So, now uh, the last topic that I want to consider in this course is uh, applications to reliability theory. That means, again the concepts that we have uh, learnt um, during the course of probability theory, uh, I want to show you some applications. Of course, some uh, everything may not be very new, but still we want to put them all together, so that you have a good feeling about. Uh, and of course, see the reliability theory is a very, uh, it is become very important now, with the systems, very complex systems. Uh, you know coming in and then besides that uh, you know uh, you have lot of dependence on the systems functioning otherwise if something fails then lot of things are connected with it also fail and you know you know uh, there's a chaos so th th this is a very growing area and um, we see that um, uh, the applications are really interesting and very meaningful so you can model the situations um, uh, here also through the uh, uh, tools that we have learnt during the course. Okay. Now, uh, so first of all, uh, let us first uh, understand what we mean by reliability of a system. Okay. Now, just for example, consider a steel beam under load. Okay. And uh, so, um, you have uh, whole structure uh, you know resting on a beam and there is a heavy load then uh, you have a fuse inserted into a circuit. Okay. So, the source of stress. So, uh, you know uh, there are systems and then there are some source of stress. So, here uh, and for example, an aeroplane wing, the planes fly at high speed, there is lot of uh, friction and uh, so there is some sort of stress on the uh, aeroplane wing also. Then uh, an electronic device you have, this is when it is functioning, again that is called that is a sort of a stress and therefore, uh, so, one can go on and writing a number, the list can be very, very big, you know, anything that you uh, use as a tool and then so, when, when you are using it, there is some stress, some kind of stress on the tool and so, uh, things will change or things will happen. So, that means, uh, so you have a source of stress, you have a system that means a component or a, a whole system and then you talk of state of failure. So, what can happen? The beam can crack. Right. And similarly, a fuse can burn out or the uh, aeroplane wing can buckle because of uh, pressure or stress and an electronic device can just fail. You suddenly find that your PC is not working or your um, uh, you know electric kettle is not working or whatever it is. Right. So, um, therefore, um, you know you can write down your own these things, uh, you can take a component or a system, you can talk about what kind of stress that system is facing and then you can also define the way the system will stop functioning. So, essentially what we are saying is that <coughs> we have this. So, now here we can and now suppose we I define, uh, to I, so therefore, so we need to uh, talk about time to failure or life length and it can it can it will be a random variable and why because you see, um, if you take identical components under identical stress may fail at different and unpredictable times. You really have no idea sometimes a thing just stops working. <coughs> so, some may fail early, some may fail at later stages and so on. So, therefore, you can see that uh, whatever the systems we have talked here uh, and uh, talked about and many other, you see that you cannot really um, for sure say that okay, uh, this component or this system will work for so long. So, there is a lot of unpredictability, <coughs> uh, they are not. So, these things uh, can not be predicted very well and therefore, uh, because uh, the you never know how the stress works on a particular component or a system and also the manner of failure also varies as I told you, because uh, the uh, beam will crack the fuse will burn out and so on. Okay. So, um, yeah, so the man, man, uh, manner of failure you can say a uh, fuse working one moment will fail the next moment. Right. You suddenly you find that uh, thing is not working, you were having good output, the radio was functioning very well broadcasting and suddenly it goes away. 
goes out. So, the, the beam you know steadily over a long period, uh, the, it becomes weaker and weaker and then it uh, cracks. Right. So, here again and, um, and so many other situations you can uh, talk about. So, therefore, uh, it is, it is um, reasonable or it is appropriate to, um, uh, to construct a probabilistic model and then um, treat the lifetime of the uh, system or the component as a random variable. So, this seems to be very appropriate and now what we will, uh, what we will do is, we will um, uh, talk about uh, different models that we can, func uh, that we can use for predicting or for uh, the lifetime of a component or a system and we will be using lot of uh, uh, tools that we have learned so far. But, so first of all, um, let us uh, define, because now with the understanding that what we mean by uh, a system failing uh, and the manner of failure can be very different and uh, the unpredictability of uh, uh, these components or systems failing under different situations. Uh, so, we can now define a reliability of a component or a system at time t say by R t. So, we will define, so R t will be the, uh, will define the re reliability of a system and we will say R t is equal to probability t greater than t. So, at time t, we want to know the reliability of, of a system, then this is equal to probability t greater than t, where t is the life length of the component. So, suppose that is uh, we are talking about a component, then uh, t is the life length and we want to know the probability that t will be greater than t and r t is defined as the reliability function. So, this is the reliability function and so for different values of t, we can get the um, value of this function, which will tell us uh, the probability that the system is uh, functioning at that time. Right. So, um, Essentially, when we say that uh, R t, when we are computing this way, this probability. So, if t is the life length, that means here it is saying that the life length is more than t. So, that means at time t, when you are computing this, uh, the system is functioning, right. So, the probability is not 0. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> I am not saying that. I am saying that the uh, probability that t is greater than t, that means the life length is greater than the. Um, so, the system is still, that is how you will interpret this, no? because this is the life length. So, the lifetime of the component is greater than t. So, at time t, that means it is functioning, the system is functioning. So, this is what, right. Mm, um, now, if for a particular item, suppose uh, uh, R t 1 is 0 0.95, okay. So, at time t 1, you compute this and it turns out to be equal to 0 0.95. This means that the that approximately 95 percent of such items used under similar conditions will be functioning at time t 1. Right? This is what we mean. So, therefore, 95 percent of the items will still be functioning, will be functioning at time t 1. So, this is what we mean by, uh, so probability being 0 0.95. Okay. So, probability that the life length is more than point, uh, is uh, more than t 1. So, th this here, this you will write as equal to probability that t is greater than or equal to t 1, sorry, t greater than t 1. So, that is equal to 0 0.95. So, this probability is 0 0.95. That means, 95 percent of such items under similar conditions will be functioning at time t 1. And uh, we continue with the. So, uh, you see, we saw that um, if f is the pdf of t, of the random variable t, the probability density function. So, in that case, we can write the reliability function R t as t to infinity, because remember this is probability t greater than t. Right. So, therefore, this will be the integral of f s from t to infinity. So, because we were saying now that this definition tells us that the uh, reliability gives you the probability that the system is functioning in the interval 0 t. So, it has not, that is it has not sorry, the, the way to say it is that the reliability tells you that the system is functioning, is has not failed in the interval 0 t, that is the better way to put it right. Because the lifetime is greater than t, that means the system has not failed in this interval right. So, it can fail anywhere in the interval t to infinity, that is what reliability is right, probability t greater than t. So, that will be written as t to infinity integral of f s from t to infinity, which 
if capital F as we denote the capital F as the uh, C D F of uh, um, cumulative density function of T, then this is 1 minus F T. Right. So, this is what uh, we can uh, and we express the uh, reliability function as. Okay. Now, uh, we will associate another uh, function with reliability and which is with a random variable t, which is the uh, uh, failure rate z and this is also called the hazard function. Now, if you recall uh, while talking about exponential distribution, I had uh, introduced this hazard function and of course, we did not talk much about it, only I simply I showed you that if the if the p d f of a random variable t is uh, exponential negative exponential, then the hazard function will be a constant. And so, we will see many more interesting kinds of hazard functions and, uh, but anyway we had come across this at that time, but now I am using it. So, that is why I said that uh, some of the things which I talk about here may already have been discussed, but uh, we are putting them all together, so that it becomes a, a complete unit. Okay. So, now um, failure rate we are defining as uh, z t is equal to f t upon r t. So, the p d f divided by the uh, reliability function, which you can write as f t upon 1 minus f t right from here defined and of course, this is defined for f t less than 1, because um, remember f t is your uh, f t is probability t less than or equal to t. So, if f t is equal to 1, that means, uh, and so this will say that the lifetime is less than or equal to t. So, if this is 1, then this that means, it is a certain event uh, f t equal to 1. So, f t equal to 1 implies that by time t, the system has definitely failed, it is a certain event. right? So, therefore, uh, this has meaning only when the system is still functioning and therefore, this is a reasonable uh, condition to impose that this is defined for f t less than 1, because f t equal to 1 would mean that the system has or the component has failed. Okay. So, therefore, uh, so this is their failure rate and why, why is this why are we calling it as a failure rate? This is the definition, but now let us understand why this does give us the failure rate of the system. So, consider the conditional probability um, t capital T lying between small t and t plus delta t, given that capital T is greater than t. So, since I am asking for see the failure rate has to be, be after time t. So, here you have to consider the inequality, strict inequality. I cannot allow equality here, because my conditional uh, event is that t must be greater than t. So, that is why uh, you cannot write uh, less than or equal to here. So, this is what we have to consider. So I mean what I am saying is that uh, the event to should be described properly. So, then the probability uh, this less than or equal. So, t lying between. Uh, so, this is strict inequality and that is less than or equal to t plus delta t. So, then by our rule, because uh, this and this when you take the intersection actually means just this event, right? because capital T is greater than t is already satisfied, which is here. So, therefore, this conditional probability can be written as uh, probability capital T between small t and t plus delta t divided by probability t greater than t. And this integral form, if I take f to be the p d f, uh, then uh, this would be my failure law, then this will be t to t plus delta t f s t s divided by r t. Now, um, for small delta t, you see uh, I can take this uh, to be uh, by the mean value theorem or okay, uh, the here you do not need a small delta t. So, by the mean value theorem of integral calculus, this integral can be written as delta t the length of the interval of integration into. So, there exists a value uh, point uh, real number psi between the interval t and t plus delta t, such that this integral can be written as delta t into f psi. So, this is the uh, well known mean value theorem of integral calculus okay, divided by r t. Now, for small delta t, then I can say that this is approximately z t into, uh, d because your um, uh, failure rate is f psi of f t upon 1 minus f t. So, then I can, because my if the delta t is small, then this interval is very small. So, I can treat this as the value at t and therefore, this will become f t because if this interval is small, then your psi is close to t and so approximately I can say this is equal to z t into delta t, because your z t is f t upon r t and so this is what your and therefore, um, 
z t represents the proportion of items that will fail between t and t plus delta t. Right. That means, during the time span delta t. So, this is the proportion, item, proportion of items and that is why we call it the uh, failure rate. So, among those items which have not failed till time t. Remember, because we are computing this. So, this is uh, p t greater than t. So, um, uh, all items which have not failed till time t, then the proportion of those which continue to work in the interval t t plus delta t. So, that is represented by z t. So, this is uh, you know an interpretation of what I defined here z t as f t upon 1 minus f t. Right. So, uh, this was the conditional probability. So, lifetime is more than t and therefore, uh, this is so therefore, z t is the rate of failure. Right. So, that makes sense. Right. Now, um, <coughs> we could we could define z t um, given uh, the p d f of t. Right. So, the given the p d f of t that means, the f uh, determined z t z uniquely the failure rate. Uh, the converse is also true. That means, if you are given the failure rate, then you can determine your t uh, uniquely, uh, determine your p d f f uniquely. And once you know f, then you know the cumulative density function also. Right. So, um, uh, let us see that. So, the theorem uh, is that if t the time to failure is a continuous random variable with p d f f, and if f 0 is 0, where f is the c d f of t, oh sorry, where capital F is the c d f of t, then f can be expressed in terms of the failure rate z t as follows. So, then f t can be written as z t into e raise to uh, uh, minus integral 0 to t of z s z s. So, that means, once I know z, then through this function I can compute my uh, p d f. So, if sub if suppose you are you somehow know the failure rate uh, you know empirically or somewhere, then you can uh, sort of uh, compute the p d f also of t. Right. Okay. And of course, this uh, uh, makes sense what what are we saying that f 0 is 0 implies that uh, r 0 is what uh, 1. So, that means, certainly um, the function the, the this is uh, we are not going to when the time is 0, then your system is <laughs> not going to fail. It will take some require some time you start the function the system working or the component is working, then only after a little lapse of time uh, there is a possibility that the system may fail or something. So, the reliability will be 1 at 0 time and so this is uh, not a uh, you know uh, this is a reasonable uh, assumption that f 0 is 0 because you are talking of reliability and the reliability comes only when the system starts functioning. So, some time has to lapse before uh, you can say that okay, the component has failed. Okay. So, um, so, with this condition now let us uh, start computing uh, f from a given z from the given failure rate. So, let us see r t is equal to 1 minus f t. If differentiate both sides that will give you r prime t as so the derivative of f t is the cumulative density form uh, is the p d f. So, this is minus f t right. So, r prime t is minus f t and therefore, your z t which is defined as f t upon r t. So, for f t you are going to write um, r, r prime t. So, this is minus r prime t upon r t right. So, f t is minus r prime t and therefore, if you integrate this from 0 to t this is of the kind 0 to t r prime s, because that is what you have here. Na? So, this is 0 to t z s d s and uh, this will be. So, now you have this integrand of the kind, where you have uh, numerator as the derivative of the denominator. And so, immediately you know that this is uh, the integral of this is minus l n minus sign is here. So, l n of r s uh, log of r s uh, from 0 to t. Right. And now, here uh, you see this that means, this will be uh, yeah. So, if you write it out, this will be minus l n r t plus l n r 0. Right. This is what this integral will be, but then uh, since f 0 is 0, r 0 is 1 and log of l n of 1 is 0. 
Okay. So, therefore, this is there is no contribution from here and you have minus l n r t. Okay. So, this since r prime since r r f 0 is 0 therefore, r 0 is 1. Right. And so, um, uh, from here uh, yeah z t is this. Uh, so, why should I write therefore, r t uh, uh, r t I wrote down this way and this this I just integrated 0 to t. So, r t uh, is uh, uh, so this is ln r and this is uh, ln r t. So, uh, you have the equation that z t uh, z t uh, I am sorry. You, so, what what have you obtained? Yeah. Okay. No, let, let that that be there. Yeah. So the long equation has become long. That's why. So what we obtained is zero to t z s d s is minus l n r t. Right. So from here we are saying that this implies that r t is so l n. So e raised to remember when when we write l n it means to the base e. So this will be e raised to minus zero to t. Z S T S. Okay, and now you have it from there. See, from this equation, uh, our original definition because you want to compute. Yeah, so I should have finished it here. So once you have this, now your uh, Z T is F T upon R T. So therefore, F T is r t into z t and r t we have just computed as this. So, therefore, f t is z t into e raise to minus integral 0 to t z s d s. This is what our result was. We wanted to show this and so, uh, given your failure rate z, I can compute the p d f of the uh, life length random variable t uh, uniquely. So, there is an interesting relationship between the reliability function r t and the mean time of failure. So, expected t would be the mean time to failure, right. And so, I want to show you that. So, this is the theorem. It says that, so the t is the random variable and r is the corresponding uh, the, um, reliability function. So, I want to show you that e t, the expected um, the mean time, expected value of t is nothing but the integral 0 to infinity r t d t. Okay. So, uh, uh, in other words, uh, if you have this, then you can integrate this function and also compute E t. Okay. There is nothing much great about it. We use the same concept that we have. So, remember um, uh, your um, definition of R t is, is the probability t greater than t. So, integral 0 to infinity R t d t will be um, integral 0 to infinity probability t greater than t d t. Now, this was a, also I think I gave you this as an exercise in one of the earlier exercises when we were uh, defining uh, expected value of a random variable, but let me now just uh, spend time and show you why this will be true. So, um, uh, t greater than t uh, if we are integrating, now this ca I can write as uh, integral t to infinity of f s d s, right? probability t greater than t. This is just what we wrote down just now. So, it is t to infinity f s d s and then 0 to infinity. Now, let us integrate by parts. So, I will treat you know uh, this one as a uh, first function and this is a second function. So, uh, integral of the first function would be simply t right and so we want to have this um, t into integral t infinity f s d s uh, from 0 to infinity right plus why will it be plus because when you differentiate this. So, integral of the first into the derivative of the first, uh, second and the integral of the whole. So, when you want to differentiate this, you see the lower limit is a function of t. So, uh, it will be <coughs> as it is when you do uh, the uh, you know the first integral, uh, the uh, integral of the first function into the second function minus, it is a minus sign. But since this is uh, the limit uh, is a function of t, uh, the lower limit is a function of t. So, there will be another minus sign. So, and the derivative of this will be 1. So, then f t. So, plus. So, therefore, the sign will become plus and this will be 0 to infinity t f t d t. 
Okay. So, if you apply integration uh, by parts to uh, uh, this treating this as the fun, uh, first function and this whole thing as the second function, then you can write this. Now, uh, you can immediately see that the uh, limit at the 0 point. So, this whole thing has to be integrated, has to be computed between 0 and infinity. So, at 0, this is 0 and this will be 0 to infinity f s t s, which is equal to 1, because remember f is the p d f and the um, and the variable t varies from 0 to infinity. So, this integral is equal to 1. So, this is 0 and now here this is little complicated, but you can see that the limit here as t goes to infinity. So, you see um, here as t goes to infinity, this part becomes 0 and this is going to infinity, but it can be shown that the product here, the limit of this product will go to 0. So, once that happens, then uh, uh, that integral reduces to simply 0 to infinity r t d t, which is I mean uh, it reduces to simply this, which is t f t d t from 0 to infinity and this is your e t. Right. And so, you have this relationship. Uh, so, either way you can use it. I mean if you if you know this, then you can say that this integral is equal to this or if uh, you know r, then you can by integrating this, you can compute the expected value of the random variable t. Okay. So, now it is um, uh, we want to study various um, failure laws. That means, we want to uh, find out the different PDFs, which will be suitable for uh, different uh, situations where we want to study. And of course, we will keep it very simple here, not go into uh, 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 complicated results, but just look at various distributions, some of the distributions and we will show why they are appropriate for uh, modeling certain situations for reliability. Okay. So, after defining your um, reliability function and your failure rate. We are going to show how important tools they are uh, to uh, you know study these failure models that we will be discussing. So, these are the two basic tools that we need and uh, continuously we will be making use of them. Okay. Now, uh, the questions that arise, the first question of course, then we will ask uh, what underlying failure laws are reasonable to assume. That is, what should be the appropriate form of the uh, p d f of t, we want to know. And of course, um, uh, uh, people have uh, you know uh, computed data and I mean collected data and then try to fit uh, these various uh, probability laws, which are which are normal, exponential, and so on. So uh, that's what we want to say that some of the tested PDFs we are going to look at. And tested by tested we mean that you know um, you uh, try to you have the data you know uh, system is going on and then you com uh, co compile the failure times and so on of the components and then you try to fit a curve and uh, um, these the ones that we discuss now have been very well tested uh, tested and um, you know uh, found suitable for the uh, some particular data that we are going to talk about right so uh, when when there's a varying effect on the component just as we said that uh, you know a beam under heavy load so, slowly gradually there is a varying effect and then it breaks down. So, um, uh, the, for such uh, situations where the varying effect is the one which is the cause of the failure, then uh, normal failure law is considered to be appropriate. Considered in the sense that again it has been tested and by, by fitting uh, the data uh, by fitting you know having the particular kind of data which is uh, you know which is for uh, components failing under the varying effect and then uh, you know finding out that yes normal uh, failure law or the pdf normal pdf uh, seems to give the uh, quite accurate results okay so um, so now therefore uh, we want to, um, and there are many situations where uh, uh, the varying effect is the prominent reason for uh, the uh, failure of the or the breakdown of the component or the system. Okay. Now, uh, when you look at the term, uh, normal law, so of course the normal law is such that uh, you know if mean is the uh, the mean expected value, so mu is com com yeah. So I'm looking at the normal law where it is mu sigma square. So, mean is mu, the expected value is mu and variance is sigma square, then uh, this has a bell shape 
the normal. So, we have already studied, I mean <laughs> in this course I do not have to spend time on describing the normal uh, curve to you, right. And we know that um, if you if you take the um, uh, area between mu minus 2 sigma and mu plus 2 sigma, then uh, area under this these two is 0 0.9572. And if you go up to 3 sigma, uh, mu minus 3 sigma, mu plus 3 sigma, then of course, very little area is left out. It is almost I think 0 0.99 something, the area within these two limits. Uh, okay. And you also see that um, for t equal to mu, this, this, this point is the mean as well as the mode. That means, the maximum failure will occur for t at around the time t equal to mu. right? But since our variable t is uh, on, ha, takes only non-negative values, therefore, we will consider the uh, normal distribution. That is only the portion from 0 to infinity and not uh, from minus infinity to infinity. Okay. So, this is a, uh, so normal failure law implies that most of the failures occur around t equal to mu, which is the expected value and number of failures decrease as t minus mu decreases in absolute value on either side. right? So, the uh, number of failures will decrease okay, and uh, the probability goes down. And uh, so, uh, for example, uh, if you take uh, normal failures law means that uh, 95.72 percent failures take place for t satisfying this mod t minus mu less than mu. So, that means, if your t is in this area, then so that will it will be from 0 to infinity only, only this portion. Okay. So, we do not have to worry about the, yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, whatever the mean, the expected value, the maximum failures will occur around this time. Now, if you look at uh, r t, the uh, reliability function, then uh, the reliability function, yeah. So, r t is equal to 1 minus probability capital T less than or equal to small t, right, because this is r t is equal to probability t greater than t, which can be written as this. And now, here uh, you can write this probability uh, for in terms of the standardized normal variate, which we have been doing all, all along in this course. So, this would be equal to 1 minus probability t minus mu divided by the standard deviation. So, this is less than or equal to t minus mu by sigma. right? And so, this becomes 1 minus phi t minus mu by sigma, which is equal to 0 0.9. Oh, well, that I was just considering the value. Okay. So, this is the this is the function functional form for your uh, reliability function. And if you plot it uh, here uh, on the t, uh, t axis, then it will be something like this. So, at, uh, uh, at uh, 0, t equal to 0, your probability t less than or equal to 0 is 0. right? because uh, um, t has takes only non negative values. So, this probability is 0 at uh, small t equal to 0. So, for this is equal to 1. So, at 0 uh, your value of r t is 1 and when you take r mu, then this will be t less than or equal to mu. Now, since t is normally distributed, we know that uh, area this, this area that means, this whole area is equal to 0 0.5. Right. Half the area is on this side and half the area. It is a symmetric curve. So, uh, therefore, this will be 1 minus 0 0.5, which is 0 0.5. So, therefore, uh, for mu equal to, uh, so this is uh, at mu t equal to mu, the value of r t is equal to 0 0.5. Okay. So, this is the kind of curve and then it goes to, as t goes to infinity, this goes to 0. So, the reliability function decreases uh, with time. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, so I was saying that see what you can say from here is this is your reliability function. If you want a high value for the reliability function, then obviously, uh, so that means you want this whole thing to be high, which, which that is what I was saying here. So, suppose this is equal to 0 0.9, then this implies that this must be small. And if for this to be small, you can again tell by the graph that uh, t must be away from mu this is the whole idea, right? because as we said that maximum failures will occur around t equal to mu and as you get away from mu, the values become smaller. So, if you want uh, uh, this whole thing, if you want high reliability, then your uh, uh, value of t must be removed from mu. right? So, for example, if this is 0 0.9, then uh, this implies that your uh, phi of t minus mu by sigma should be 0 0.1. Right? 
this you bring here, then 1 minus 0 0.9 would be 0 0.1 and so that will make it make t minus mu by sigma equal to minus. So, you look up the tables, right. Again, I do not have to spend time on this, the standard norm, because this is now a standardized normal variate. So, you look up the numbers, uh, the, the table among the tables corresponding to 0 0.1 area, you look up. So, it will be somewhere here for the standard normal thing. So, it will be somewhere here point, because you want only area 0 0.1 up from up to this point. So, it will be very small. Right. So, this is minus 1.2 and so uh, t comes out to be minus 1.2 times sigma plus mu. So, that much removed from mu your value of t is if you want reliability of the order of 0 0.9. Okay. <coughs> So, take another example. Now, here suppose the uh, failure rate, uh, the um, uh, time life length, lifetime uh, of an, a component is normally distributed with mean mu and variance 100. It is, right? So, the standard deviation is 10. Suppose this is this and you are told that uh, the reliability for the uh, at 100 hours is 0 0.99. Okay? So, r of 100 is 0 0.99. You have to find the value of mu that is the expected value of t uh, you have to find. So, uh, since we know the functional form for r t, that means again 0 0.99 is 1 minus phi of, so we standardize the normal, this variate t, which is 100 minus mu upon 10 standard deviation. right? So, this is phi uh, 100 minus mu by 10. So, that gives you that phi of 100 minus mu by 10 is 0 0.01. So, again we look up the standard tables corresponding to the area 0 0.01, this value, the value of z is equal to minus 2.33. Okay. So, the tables, so the uh, see the smaller this becomes, the further away go, you go from the mean value, that is what we are saying. And so, uh, this implies that mu is, see here, um, you will uh, multiply this with this and then, you, so it will become 23.3 .3 and mu comes to this side, this gets added to 100. So, this will be then 123.3 hours. So, the mu that means the mean is here and so you see uh, this is removed from the mean. This is 123.3 hours. So, at 100 hours if you are asking for reliability 0 0.99 then uh, your mu is this. Okay. So, this is the whole idea uh, that uh, uh, you if you have uh, if you, uh, if your data or your experience uh, with the system that you are working with is that um, uh, the normal distribution is appropriate for uh, uh, studying the uh, failure rates, then so here of course uh, you should also look at what your uh, z t will be, right? So if you want to uh, compute, uh, yeah, which may not be a very, so for example uh, your z t we said is f t upon uh, r t, right. So, which will be 1 upon root 2 pi sigma uh, or okay, uh, let me just. So, this will be equal to uh, your f t is 1 upon root 2 pi sigma e raise to minus 1 by 2 sigma square x minus mu whole square divided by uh, 1 minus phi of t minus mu by sigma. So, something like this. Okay. This is your failure rate. So, if you want to compute z, you will get this complicated expression, but it seems that here um, your uh, reliability function is the one which is uh, more useful and has a simple form because all you have to do is to for a fixed value, for a given value of t, mu and sigma if given, then you just have to look up the normal tables and compute the reliability of the system at uh, any given time t. Failure law, I said to be applicable, we want this, because um, obviously, uh, the uh, time to failure cannot be less than 0. It is only when the uh, apparatus or the uh, instrument starts functioning, then uh, you talk about its uh, uh, failure time and so on. So, time to failure. So, therefore, since this is less than or equal to 0 and normally our, um, our, our, our the 
normal distribution ex, uh, extends from minus infinity to infinity. But what we are saying here is that the most of the curve should lie to the right of 0. So, that means here Yes, so, the curve should be like this. So, very small area is to the left of 0. So, most of it lies to the right of 0, then the computations would be fine. Okay. So, this is very important. So, that means, this probability t less than or equal to 0 should be essentially 0 and right? negligible, very small that is what we want to say. Okay. Now, uh, another um, way to handle this situation could be that I consider the truncated normal distribution. That means, you truncate when uh, you, you may have your normal distribution this and then you truncate it this portion and so that means, uh, then you would consider, uh, but then since it has to be a PDF. So, then you will have to. So, that is what I am trying to say that you know a truncated normal distribution. So, if you consider the truncated this normal distribution truncated to the left of T 0, then the p d f would be this, but that is not depicting the actual situation, because by this what we are doing is, since I want to call this a p d f. So, this integral and of course, this is 0 for x less than 0. So, this is from 0 to infinity. So, what we are saying is that this will be from 0 to infinity, this will integrate to 1, but this is not what I want because I want the normal failure law, but it should be such that the um, uh, most of the curve lies to the right of uh, 0 of t equal to 0. So, that is the meaning and therefore, this uh, uh, of course, this will complicate your computations also, but besides that uh, uh, it will not give you the uh, desired results. So, therefore, the truncated normal distribution is not to be considered. It is simply uh, that keeping this in mind, we have to make sure that you know most of the curve lies to the right of uh, 0. So, therefore, when we compute the probabilities, they would be approximately uh, all right uh, for and, and that as I said that the normal failure law is for the aging, uh, where the aging is prominent. So, now we will study, uh, we will look at the other uh, failure laws, uh, which have again been tested for certain different situations and have proved very, very uh, have proved to show good results. So, this will be exponential distribution and variable distribution and some others. Okay. So, let us look at the exponential failure law. Now, of course, uh, obvious way to define the exponential failure law would be by defining the PDF. So, we say that um, uh, the PDF uh, so of t is alpha e raise to minus alpha t, where t is positive, uh, takes positive values, and then alpha is also some positive constant, right? And then we can obtain r t and z t, but that does not really uh, have that dramatic effect as when you say that uh, the law. We say that the uh, failure rate, that means z t, is a constant, is equal to alpha, right? So, uh, here I just said that alpha is some constant, but actually uh, when your law is exponential law, uh, failure law is exponential, then negative exponential, then your failure rate or your sorry, your, uh, uh, yeah, your failure rate would be a constant, right, is a positive constant, is equal to alpha actually. So, alpha is your failure rate. So, this is constant, right, and uh, uh, immediate consequence of this is, because remember we said that we can um, uh, given z, we can uh, uniquely determine the p d f and also given the p d f, we can uniquely determine the function z, the failure rate. So, here um, you see the definition was that f t would be uh, z t e raise to minus integral 0 to t of z s f s. So, here z is a constant. So, therefore, this is alpha into d s so integral, this leads to t. So, t alpha and here uh, z, z t is alpha again. So, this is alpha e raise to minus alpha t uh, for all t non-negative. Non so, therefore, this is your. Uh, so, immediately you c compute the p d f of t and uh, converse is also immediate, because if you are given uh, uh, that the f t is alpha e raise to minus alpha t, then this we have already done this computation, but anyway let us just go through it again. So, z t is f t upon 1 minus f t, which is r t and so f t is alpha e raise to minus alpha t and you, you know that 1 minus f t is e raise to minus alpha t. Okay. This is probability t greater than uh, capital T greater than small t and so it will be e raise to minus alpha t and so uh, it comes down to alpha. So, this is the constant. Uh, so, your z t the failure rate is constant. So, immediately uh, we can write down this theorem that um, 
And so, if I remember correctly, we had not done this part. That means, given the failure rate, when I had talked about the uh, exponential, uh, when we were, we had just introduced the exponential distribution, I had defined the uh, uh, hazard function or the failure rate, but I did not uh, at that time uh, discuss this part. That given z t, you can uh, uh, obtain your p d f uniquely. Right. So, now, uh, we can immediately write down this theorem, because I have shown you both ways. That is, if uh, and so, for a constant failure rate, the only p d f that can be there uh, is your exponen negative exponential. And if the p d f is negative exponential, p d f of the lifetime uh, random variable t, then it has to be the failure rate has to be a constant. So, immediately we have the theorem that uh, let t the time to failure be a continuous random variable assuming all non negative values, then t has an exponential distribution if and only if it has constant failure rate. Okay. So, this is now a neat, neat way to uh, present the whole thing that is uh, there can be no other uh, p d f which satisfies the condition uh, that the corresponding failure rate is a constant. So, for constant failure rate would always mean exponential p d f. Okay. And um, constant failure rate implies that uh, it is time independent. right? So, no matter uh, that is the failure does not change with time, the failure rate does not change with time. So, no matter. So, therefore, this will be uh, uh, appropriate for situations where there is no varying effect. right? So, that means, no matter how long the component has been working, it does not matter. It does it has no bearing on the uh, failure of the component. It will uh, only be uh, some external. Uh, so, uh, maybe I will come out with in the next lecture, I will try to show you some more uh, you know uh, ways of describing uh, uh, the situations, where these different uh, failure laws can be uh, appropriate. So, essentially uh, now try to think of the situations, where uh, the failure is not because of uh, uh, because of the varying effect. That means, not because of some kind of stress or load, but it is. So, therefore, as we try to say that if you take a fuse, then a fuse can be working fine for a long time and then suddenly it fails. So, it is not because maybe because of high current or something high current has come and then the uh, uh, fuse uh, uh, burns out. Otherwise, it may continue for, uh, for a long time. So, therefore, such situations would be very appropriately modeled by the uh, exponential failure law. And one can you know now that you read about this, you can yourself uh, you know try to think of uh, uh, components or systems where uh, uh, the failures are not because of uh, the uh, varying effect or uh, this kind of some kind of load or stress, but uh, it is a different kind of failure and therefore, uh, this can be modeled by uh, the exponential law. And you can see that how effectively it will uh, give you the parameters that you require for uh, you know predicting things about the uh, model. Okay.